All right, uh, it's the part two of our video on uh, the new player's guide, episode 86. So we'll just jump right back into where we were. Um, please like, share, and subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, leave comments down below. And uh, yeah, let's get back to the video. Thanks. Oh, oh, I see. I have to go to the next one. Give me one moment here. We're just going to do that and then bring that up. Here we go. That's the next tab. We're, and this is we're showing on my account because I hadn't unlocked it yet on the um, on the starter account I, I just made. Um, but this is basically the cosmetics um, tab. So as soon as you get a cosmetic, this will open. And it shows you everything you have available to you. So any outfits you've unlocked or, or you know, gotten through um, crates or whatever, because you can get stuff through crates as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh what else? Oh yeah, so basically it's all, uh, there's like bags, different backpacks you could be carrying, um, different gloves. You can, you, can, you can customize quite a bit. Um, there's two types of outfits. There's um, the outfit, sort of like what I'm wearing here, which is generally um, pants, boot, your pants, boots, and your top is like one piece. And that's, that's a, a standard kind of out outfit. And that allows you to also play around with what you're wearing on your hands, you know, any hat, face stuff you have going on. So it gives you a bit of uh, other customization options, options you can do. But then they have what's called an outfit set, outfit set. And it's um, one where you put the outfit on and it's pretty much covering almost everything for you. It has, you know, gloves, hat, everything usually. So maybe there'll be one thing you can change on it, you know, personalized, but otherwise it's, you're, you're wearing the whole set. And those are typically things like there's um, a radiation suit that you can get that's head to toe. You're just, that's what you're wearing. Um, and there's a few others. There's like a big snow suit that pretty much yep. covers you all up, you know, almost like those old snow suits when you were a kid and you're like bundled up and you can't move. So <laughs> that kind of style. But there's a different, there's a, there's a bunch of different outfit sets, but then you know, there's two categories for outfits and that's why. One's just more basic, but it gives you more customization um, yeah, choices. So. Yeah. And if, if there's uh, a piece of, or if there's an item that's not compatible with like your outfit, it actually won't show up as an, uh, as a, an option. So like, uh, right. I'm thinking of like the tin, there's a tinfoil hat, like literally it came out as a April yep. fool's joke, uh, not this year, but, uh, the previous year. Um, so, uh, it, with certain, um, outfits, it, it's not even an option. You can't wear it. So uh, right. just in case you guys are, are wondering like, hey, where did this item go in uh, my outfits or uh, in my cosmetic collection? Uh, that's why it won't even list it because it's not compatible with uh, that current, you know, uh, outfit. So you, you may have to, to switch it up um, just to be able to see it. Yeah. And, and Vigor's really like, they have a lot of different styles of outfit. Like when you start out, obviously you're, um, you're, you're wearing what's called the raincoat, the green raincoat. Um, it's just a standard kind of patched up green raincoat. You have whatever pants, you have a bag, um, and that's about it. Um, but then when you uh, eventually unlock this kind of thing, you can see or go into the shop, um, there's like a lot of different versions of that same raincoat. You can get orange, you can get yellow, you can get blue or whatever. There's a lot of different versions of, of each outfit typically. Um, like this is like a, a hoodie outfit I'm wearing here. And there's, yeah, a lot of different versions of this hoodie. So, you, yeah. you know, if you don't have it, it might be in the store, you can get it. Sometimes they have promotions where you can potentially get something. Um, I know on Xbox, and uh, right now it's just Xbox, uh, partners have uh, quite a few partners. And these are original partners, I should say. Um, yeah. Campaign so release well, partners. From campaign release partners um, have special bags. Um, so you can yep. find the special backpack or not. It's like a bag, but they'll have their logo on it so you can get those still usually um if you if you find a campaign release partner out there um they may have a code that they can still give you to get it as well and there's a websites that track some of these things too so you might be able to find some of those old codes if they're still available because they were typically limited to yeah. how many that could be got so if they're still available you might still be able to get some of those old bags but just fyi there's um special ones out there that you may not be able to get um, that sometimes had special ways of getting them. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, those are outfits. Uh, another thing under customize are gestures. Uh, when you start out, everyone has the, Hey, yep. <laughs> Hey, um, where you just wave and then say, Hey, that's a way of greeting outlanders. 
Um, you don't see them here, but there's like some of the basic ones you start with are like pointing. There's a lot of different pointing ones. Um, yep. And that might be mainly it, pointing and hey. <laughs> uh, but as you play, as you can you can find like in in crates or sometimes they have done it in seasons before, but they don't release the emo um, the gestures quite as often anymore. And nowadays you can also get them through the store, but you can get the special ones like there's a salute, a uh, finger snap. There's some kind of trolley ones where you can give someone the finger. There's like, <laughs> yep. um, they have quite a few emo emotes. So, which is, it can be fun and good ways of communicating with people or um, sometimes troll them. If that's what you're into <laughs> yep. trolling the people's, um so that was a screen where you could assign to your wheel which ones you have available to you uh weapon skins every weapon pretty much has something available to it uh sometimes they're special skins that were like theme related based on a, a season like here we're showing the the m1911 pistol with the special police line skin that was from uh i think season three rivals yep rivals yeah and so there's you know Quite often, weapons will have season-specific ones. Uh, but then there's also a lot of alternate skins you can get that are just like colors or um, different types of camo that aren't related to a season. It's just ones you can find or buy. When I say find, I mean in a crate, not out in the uh, encounters or anything yeah. like that. Um, sometimes when you pick up, say, if you kill somebody in an encounter and you pick up their weapon, you'll see it has a special skin on it. You won't get to keep the skin. It's just just for that as you're using it in that encounter but when you come back to your shelter it'll have whatever skin you had on it what you have a you know assigned to it if you have yep. one at all because every weapon has a basic look without any kind of skin on it um but that's weapon skins and then the last thing you can customize is your title and this is literally just as you're loading into a game and you see all the people loaded there some may have titles like just saying hey this is person has this next to them and the titles can be something like, you know, they've gotten to the certain level of a season, um, typically, uh, or they've, they've done so many of a certain thing. Like this particular one is, I've extracted with one airdrop. So that's yeah. a special season. And that goes up to, I'm not sure, what does that go up to? Um, they, they get um, better, yeah, like 10, higher 000. and higher. Is it up to 10,000 airdrops? 5,000 or 10,000. <laughs> yeah, there might be. There are some people who uh, really hard grind yeah. this game. But there's like number of kills. You can you can say how many kills you've gotten to so far. Um, and it only shows up to that point. So like if you have like 5,000 kill or say you have like 2,600 kills, there's like a 2,500 kill one. It only shows that you've gotten 2,500 yeah. kills. So they, they won't know you have 2,600, but whatever. Yep. Um, there's one for tr distance travel. There's lots of different ones out there. So. Yeah. Uh, having all like the the vinyls or all the trolls and finding all the of that. a particular type of collectible yeah there's um special ones for that too so those can be little ways of bragging hey i found all the different uh vinyls so i'm a vinyl master um yep. yeah but that's that's the different type of titles that you can just display next to your name as you're loading into a and that's the only value they have really yeah yep. uh and then next is the crate one Yep. So just, here just you, you have the various crates. So you have the special crates for uh, the elimination mode and the shootout mode. So if you win those, um, you know, you can get those. Well, eliminations, you're not get, guaranteed an elimination crate. But uh, no. if you score a certain amount of points, yes, you will get an elimination crate. Uh, you have your shootout crates. Um, you have your different levels of special issue, which is the gold military grade, which is the purple uh, rare, which is the blue uh, and uncommon, which is green and gray, which is uh, common, which it, it's actually harder to get a common one these days because nowadays, now, yeah, a, a default a crate in an encounter is in common now, uh, yeah. but you can still acquire them. Uh, there's also mm -hmm. uh, weapon crates uh, and resource crates, which are blue, but um, you know they, they give minimal XP. Um, yeah. There's also I forget what the name of it is, but there's like the starter um, oh. uh, crate, which when you first start an account, it's literally like the first crate that you have. 
Um, yeah, I can't remember what it was called either because yeah. I did do it today, and it looks like a gray. It, it actually looks like a blue crate, but it's not. It you because know, it, it has the same kind of symbol as a gray crate, so it just gives you okay. your starting equipment kind of. Yeah, uh, so yeah. these are the uh, various crates that you can acquire. Um, you know, again, uh, you you could acquire them through uh, the donation at the back of your shelter uh, once a week. Uh, you could uh, acquire them by getting them in an encounter from either the airdrop that's dropped by you know the the airplane or from uh, a red chest uh, within the encounter um, or um, you know completing certain challenges the harder the challenge you know uh, you may get uh, a crate um, or uh, you know the the, the other game modes uh, eliminations oh, right. uh, eliminations it's like you know you're you're almost guaranteed a green crate uh, even if you lose, yeah. um, so um, is definitely a good way of farming crates. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Is sure. there anything else about the? No, crates? that's. Yeah, the only thing is, um, so when it comes to crates, uh, there's there's two, I guess, I don't know, modes of thought with them. Um, save up the crates and then open them at once, especially like during a double XP weekend. Um, but you know, if you're really short on supplies, then you know, if you're got a few crates around then opening them up helps get you weapons and resources obviously you know the lower the level of the crate the less the different things you're going to get so like on a gray crate the common crate you're typically going to get like common level parts or or weapons and ammo um, but then as you go up levels you'll start getting the better stuff out of them um common crates like the gray ones and the resource and uh weapon crates give the least amount of experience. So like you get like 25 experience for opening a common crate and 50 experience for opening one of those resource and, and um, weapon ones. Those ones are almost not worth um, saving for a double XP because even with double XP, you're not getting much to advance in the level. The uncommon is where you start, you know, getting some significant experience. You get 250 experience for an uncommon, 500 for a rare, um, 750 for a military and a thousand for a special issue. So those ones holding on to them for a double XP event um, can be worth it because you know you're when you open them, then you'll get quite a boost to your XP. So that's that's the only thing is if if you're not hurting for stuff, but you want more XP, then holding on to them is good. But some of those lower end ones just open them anyways because even the boost you're not getting much out of it. So that's my thoughts, anyways. Yeah, uh, for me it's like double XP everything. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but fifty. Okay, yeah. great. I got fifty XP out of that common instead of twenty five. It's like, and, it, and your bar doesn't move at so all. There's so many. <laughs> there's so many. Like you, you get you acquire so many over time that, uh, and that, it takes you forever to open them right yeah. now because it's only you can only open one at a time. Yeah. If they ever bring in a multiple open option, then great. Yeah. Then hold on to them. But if you're yeah. sitting there opening 30 common crates. <laughs> oh, more. I, I've done more. I've done like 50, yeah. 60, 70, 80, 100. You're just. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'd love to see like a, like an option just to add like, you know, open all of my weapon and issue crates or weapon resource crates yeah. and stuff like that. Just not all, but just give it to me like that. Or a batch, and, batch open some or whatever. Yeah. yeah. If they, it'd be great if they come in with that option. I would just love it, <laughs> but right now it's yep. one at a time, and so that's why I open those those cheap ones up right away because I don't want to be sitting there for an hour opening crappy crates. I want to open the good crates, yep. <laughs> good good XP. <laughs> okay, uh, next we have uh, the next screen will be the uh, memento screen. So there's a uh, collectibles in the game, and those can be fun, especially if you're a completionist. Um, there's typically there, there's three listed here. There's really four kinds of collectibles, but the fourth one we'll talk about after these ones, they're a little different. Um, but these ones uh, are, are special things you can find throughout the uh, throughout an encounter. There's trolls, um, and each troll, and, you, know, you can sort of see an outline of them. And if you go into it, like if, into the category, it'll actually um, give you a hint on where you can find each particular type of troll. And they're just like the little troll dolls. But you'll hear them, actually. So as you're going through an encounter, sometimes you hear some giggling. That'll be a troll doll. So if you um, if you know your hints of where they might be, you you know, if you hear the giggle, you might think, okay, I'm in a, a wooded area right now. So very good chance it's like the, the tree troll. 
it, it could be around the base of one of the trees near you. Um, there's one that's like a, a cave troll, so it's going to be typically underground or or some or you know some kind of covering of some kind. Um, there's a couple of different ones that like water. There's like a sea troll and a river troll. So yeah. there's all these different trolls. There are different levels of difficulty to find, meaning they may not you know spawn. There's usually uh, I don't know if there's a limited I, number that can spawn in, a, in an I encounter. I think it's two or three per encounter. Uh, yeah. But uh, like you said, like there, there's different rarities where it's like uh, the spawn rate is lower. So uh, you may find some of the more common ones. Like I think the metal troll is one of the more common ones and the fire troll, yeah. I think. So. Yeah, fire troll is really common. And so like a lot of those common ones you can find on almost almost every map typically but there are certain trolls um that are a little harder to find and they may only sh show up uh, more more often on certain maps i think mm -hmm. like the um i think there's that one the snow one has a couple different maps it has to be a snowy map and i think it's typically one that has like elevations to it on uh, like a higher oh, you mean, areas you mean the air troll oh maybe it's the air troll i'm thinking of yeah I'm not the air sure. troll doesn't show up on yeah. every map yeah, and yeah. the meadow troll only shows up on 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 yeah. certain maps as well. Yeah. Um, typically, where there's like groups of flowers, the purple flowers. Um, so there's a few maps that have those. So yeah, certain trolls might be harder to find, um, but that's the trolls. Another collectible is lighters. Uh, again, there's about ten different lighters that you can find in the in the game, and there are uh, certain lighters that are res again restricted to certain maps. Um, there's one called the fish or fisk lighter. It can only be found on the fisk map um which typically in the big warehouse area i think is where you can find it yep um uh, but those like the gold yeah the boss's office yeah that's one area um but in that big building itself um i think there's a few different locations it can show up yep. um but there's a few like the gold level ones they're usually restricted to one maybe two maps um i think there's um but then there's like the more common ones which is like the kitchen one so almost any kitchen potentially could spawn the kitchen one and it looks like it has a tomato on it so each one has a little design and so you know you can find those almost anywhere uh the third type that they came out with was vinyls and these are just yeah record albums you can find again they have different levels um when it comes to uh, vinyls i think they pretty much can be found on any map i don't think there's any that are restricted to a particular map no. but they're usually restricted to like four different up to four different locations per map so there'll be like certain houses that could potentially have the record yeah uh so if you but start only, learning the spawn locations yeah. yeah and there's just one spawn per uh map yeah so it can take you a while to get because then um, they started out with i think is it was it 10 now they have 20 or is it something like that uh, i don't remember the the exact number yeah yeah. But it's it's probably close to that. And what's what's kind of cool about them is as you find them, you can start hearing them in your shelter. So you have a rec the record player shows up in your shelter. Anything that you found, you can listen to. You can hear the whole song. Yeah. And so there's some really good songs actually, for uh, for little com you know common ones. So that's pretty cool. The last kind of collectible are cassettes. These are um, a special, a special story that they sort of came out with, and they released it on various seasons. And um, they don't show up on the main screen; they show up in your in your shelter area, in the little weapons bunker you have. So there's a little area you can go into. It shows all the different weapons you currently kind of have, consumables you can you know you have and you can make. There's a little area that shows a cassette air, uh, tape, and it shows you what cassettes you've collected. Um, these are found in the special um, uh, lootable uh, events, like uh, yeah. like the time save, the um, uh, yeah, the Bard House, and the um, the the lock container. Lock container. Thank you. Yeah. <sighs> so many words to remember. <laughs> um, but uh, each of these, uh, so each each encounter will have two of these uh, special event locations you can go to. And in, in those um, uh, either safe or container, you can find a cassette. You can only carry one cassette with you at a time. Um, and as you and you don't know what cassette you found, because basically it's just sequential. Each time you find a cassette, it's going to be the next one in the series. Yep. Um, they did it four different seasons so far, I think, where they've released cassettes. Yeah, three it's or approximate. Four. 
three or four. Um, each each season had up to ten cassettes. I think it was per season. So as you find them, it'll um, it sort of unlocks a story. So um, and you can listen to them. I haven't even listened to them all yet, and I keep meaning to. But it's one of those things where I'm usually just playing the game, and I never think to listen to the cassettes. Uh, but you can go on YouTube if you actually want to spoil it for yourself. You can go onto YouTube and find people who have shown like shown all the different cassettes like and, and and have the audio tracks playing so you can hear hear the whole story if you want but if you want to unlock it yourself and 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 listen to it as you go each time you bring a cassette back it'll show up here yeah. um once you have all of the cassettes it's the one kind of collectible that if you keep picking it up you'll get X, more you'll get xp for it so it's called a broken cassette and then you get like 500 xp for it so yeah, that's like the fourth type of collectible that they have. It's just it's done a little differently. Yeah, yeah, well worth it. And yeah, it is actually. Yeah, totally. It, it it is worth it. It's worth getting them for the story. And I've listened to some of the story. I just haven't listened to all of the story yet. So I need to go back in and listen to it. <laughs> and then with the mementos, there's another tab, and that tab is medals. These really have no effect on the game, um, but as you complete different things within the game it'll say you've unlocked this medal. They're kind of like achievements. And all these different medals will have an equivalent achievement depending on your system. So like for Xbox, yeah. it's Xbox achievements. For PlayStation, it's trophies. And Switch, I don't know if Switch has actually an equivalent <laughs> or not, but they still they still have these medals. And yeah. um, when you go to them, it'll be like, um, like one of them is like a medical one. It's like once you've gotten all of the uh, plans That's for cool. all the medicine, things um you unlock that one um there's one for uh there's a rubik's cube in your shelter if you scramble it and then solve it you unlock that one so you can actually go through them all and see what they require to be to, un to be unlocked so it's just just a little thing you can play for it has no effect on the game it's just just an achievement yep um here talk and next one is leaderboards yeah. So we have the leaderboards, which have been just reworked uh, recently. Um, so now uh, it's broken down into game mode. Um, as, and then within each game mode tab, uh, there is a weekly, seasonal, and lifetime. Um, and I didn't and grab screenshots for everything. I just gave this yeah. one screenshot. It's basically the same kind of thing, even though the achievements are different. You know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so like yeah. uh, every every like uh, game mode has different... Um, uh, stat categories that are being tracked um, and the, the weeklies get reset uh, obviously every week, seasonal every season um, and lifetime don't get uh, reset but the lifetime some categories did not track from the beginning because they weren't tracking them initially so uh, there's like a random point in time where they actually started tracking some categories but um, uh, and one thing that was added when they redid the leaderboard was the skill rating in so in the bottom left um so you have your skill rating um and you have a separate one again for the weekly seasonal and lifetime and uh based on your level uh the emblem will actually change color so uh in this um you can just see it above doc's uh webcam just right up there uh, yep. there it, it's blue so you know it's essentially like the rare um rarity but uh, it just means like uh, actually not a hundred percent sure, but I believe it's because uh, it's in the top X percentile of you know uh, the rating type thing. And um, this is the beginner account, so it must start at blue <laughs> because <laughs> so that must uh, be the lowest level. I don't know I'm because sure. this is like I, I thought it was yeah. great, but any, anyways, uh, it, it could. Yeah. I, I'm honestly not sure. Um, not sure either. But I, anyone's ever asked, but uh yeah so it, it's like it could change color like i've seen uh uh you know military grade type colors and whatnot um but i've never seen a special issue i don't think but uh nonetheless uh so this is where you you see uh y your various stats for uh every game mode uh and then as you uh progress so like every week you need to play a minimum amount of games in order to actually see like how you rank against other players too, uh, because if you don't play enough games, then they're not going to actually show you um, compared to other players. And uh, it will actually tell you like, 
you need to play one more encounter or one more shootout uh, in order to see uh, the stat, the stats for yeah. uh, other people as well. Um, one thing that we do miss uh, with this uh, update uh, to the leaderboards is we used to be able to see how uh, people on our friends list uh, were doing type thing, so you could yeah. actually like, see them. Um, but uh, maybe one day we'll be able to see it. Uh, yeah. Again. So right now you can just compare yourself to everybody. So, and when I say everybody, it just sort of shows you where you are on the on the list, and you can see who's above and below you, and that's it. You can't scroll up and down, unfortunately. Or you can see what the top players, how they are, and then it'll show you the yeah. top players of that category and what they're at. So you can sort of see, okay, I'm at fifteen, fifteen of this particular one, and that's my my um, and that's just my what's behind me right now this little level thing showing where i am so i'm 15 15 or 13 sorry 15 13 and so yeah. if you if you were to see the top players that probably be at like 16 17 18 who knows how, how high they, it goes but that that that's we're showing you where you're at and what the top players are at um and it another thing that you used to show what they don't show currently is um when you bring something like what you did in your last encounter so like yeah. if um like my kills are plus one you know, I got like if I got one kill in, in this current encounter, it, it used to show you um, what you got the last encounter. Like if it was zero or whatever, then it, it used to be nice to see, you know, if you had yeah. what, how you compared from encounter to encounter. But you don't have that right now. But, you know, it could be adjusted. It, yeah. This is this whole new layout is quite different than how it used to be, where you just saw your lifetime and stats. And that was it. And there was like one stat block and well, like block, but it was like, there were different stats that check, checked. It was like six or seven different stats, but that was it. So now yeah. they give you a lot more options to see, which is nice. And um, I'm sure they'll adjust it as we go. Yeah. And it'll actually say to, um, because I think you said this is a new account from this week, uh, but yeah. like for each category, like our um, weekly seasonal, um, it'll actually say what the previous ranking was. So you could right. compare how you did from last season or last week type thing. But yeah. uh, aside from that, like you can't see historically, it's like, oh, week two of the season, how did I do? Uh, it's just right. literally the, the previous week or previous season type thing. Yeah. And actually here it says week 18. It's like one day, six hours, 59 minutes until the end of that week. So, you know, um, Sunday night, it'll reset to the next week and the season will might not give a, a countdown yet, but same kind of thing. I'll tell you how much is left to, to change those seasonal stats. And then elimination shootout, same kind of thing. It just shows you how you're doing in those particular game modes. So, and they never had those ones before, which was, so it's, it's really nice to have those now if, if you're really into those game modes for sure. And then um, I think the last sort of set of screens are, is it? Oh, no. Oh, I have to, uh, sorry, just move one sec. Boop, boop. Okay, last sort of set of screens are the equip menus. So this is where you can change your loadout. Um, as you can see here, I'm, I'm rocking a Thompson with uh, some ammo um, and a couple healing consumables. Uh, so uh, th th this basically shows your, your bag. Your bag has... Um, uh, 25 different slots and so uh, the more you take in you know the less you have less room you have to necessarily bring stuff out with you uh, so you know it's a trade-off um, you have four weapon slots so it's like two larger weapon slots and two smaller ones smaller ones are typically um, pistols can be knives um, there are some smaller like um, submachine guns yep. and uh, shotguns that can go in those slots as well and then the larger ones are going to be like your larger SMGs, assault rifles, machine guns, and um, rifles. And, and special, there's one special issue weapon, which is the crossbow. <laughs> um, yeah, and the crossbow is kind of kind of tough to use, but uh, it's out there. Um, but yeah, so you can choose what weapons you want um, in your stash. Uh, there's different categories. There's the uh, weapons, ammo, and consumables. Uh, when you go into weapons, when you select a weapon to to use, it'll automatically pop up and say, how much ammo do you want to take with this weapon? So you can choose right there, you know, to add ammo to your bag for it. Um, and the ammo is typically done in stacks. So like for this uh, Thompson, it's stacks of 20. I took three stacks with it. And then when you go into the encounter, 
um, it'll be auto loaded for you. So when you first get in, it'll have a full clip. So it'll take it out of your inventory um, as you go into the encounter. Um, and any weapons you have will be fully will be loaded as you, as you go. So if you have multiple weapons, they'll be loaded as long as you brought ammo. If you didn't bring any ammo, then well, yeah. I guess you're gonna have to find some ammo. <laughs> um, but the ammo tab is also where you can go to craft ammo. So like all of these tabs are also where you go to craft. And I think I brought I show this is for deconstruct. I'm gonna go back uh, forward here a little bit because um, I should have done this in a certain order. Uh, yeah. So here's where you can craft something. Uh, when you go into the consumables or weapons, it'll it'll show you what you currently have. Uh, for weapons, it'll be in categories, so you can find you know you can sort of you can go to like I want a rifle. You can go to the rifle category, open it, and see the different rifles you own and can cre and craft. If you can make it, it'll have a wrench beside it, like these uh, particular ones here, and um, you, you don't necessarily have to have the plans to make it as long as you have parts you can you can make make it so like all of these i don't have the plans for any of this right now but because i found some um parts for them i can craft them um yeah. when you have parts it's an instant craft it'll like make it right away but if you don't have parts and you have the plan and you have the right level of uh, crafting table yeah. then you can start crafting it and it'll take a certain amount of time depending on what it is um, your, your, there's different levels, like the different color levels, um, correspond. So it's like this gray, green, blue, purple, and, and gold. Uh, but with gray, actually there's two versions of gray when it comes to, um, consumables and weapons, there's plentiful and then there's common plentiful or like your really basic stuff. Um, but there are some good weapons in it. Uh, there's the, uh, um, the Mosin rifle is considered plentiful, and the uh, the VZ58 assault rifle is plentiful, and that's not a great assault rifle, but it's a good starting assault rifle. And if it's plentiful, it's usually pretty quick to make. So you, um, I think it, I think it's even just less than a minute, maybe around a minute. I don't know for sure, yeah. but um, and if it's a consumable, same kind of thing. Um, I think most of the consumables, if they're gray, they're common. I, I'm not sure if any, there are any plentiful ones, but there might be. But again, um, if you have the plan, it, it's it's not usually too long. I think it's like 18. I think it's 18 seconds right now for a, like a like a bandage or a, at the at the at the beginning level. So it's pretty, you know, not too long. You have to wait, but you still have to wait a little bit. And uh, for consumables, those build times, as we mentioned, can go down based on your uh, certain shelter upgrade that'll reduce that. So there's a point where you can get your consumables if you fully maxed out your shelter upgrade to instant craft. All of your, all, no matter what the consumable, you can, if you have the plan, you'll be able to make it instantly. But that yeah. takes quite a while. It'll be a while before you get to that. So a lot of grinding. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then the same thing with weapons. There's, there's, like I said, there's different levels of weapons and they take longer to make based on um, their, uh, their, their color grade or whatever. Uh, but with, when it comes to weapons or consumables, there's the option to use crowns to craft it instantly. And it, 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 it of course, it varies depending on the level of the um, thing. Like uh, I think a bandage and a disinfectant, it was like one crown to instantly craft it. So I could wait 18 seconds or I could spend a crown. So I was going to yeah. wait 18 seconds, but it gets it gets quite a bit more expensive as you go but then like sometimes it's you could be waiting days for some of the uh special issue weapons to be crafted i think one or two days potentially or no maybe it's hours it might just be 18 hours yeah, yeah it might be 18 hours or something like that it's like 12 or something yeah hours. there are there are a couple 12. different ones i think there's a special issue that's might be 12 but then i think there are some that are 18 i was thinking days but it's actually just hours but still 18 hours is a long time to wait for a, for a weapon. So um, weapons are one of those things that's you, you can get quite a few in your in your shelter. Like uh, as you start going out there and and looting and getting back, you know, um, you can find weapons in lots of different locations. Always uh, if you if you're looking for even basic weapons, look in bedrooms, um, look at kitchens are good places for knives. And the melee system has been improved to the point where knives are actually useful. Yeah. Um, but then in bedrooms, in like bedside tables or in other, um, wardrobes, you can find 
pistols, you can find rifles. So there are uh, things you can find within houses. And then in your special loot events, there's typically some good weapons in, in those. So if you can get one of those, you can get some good weapons. Um, there's also a thing called the buried cache. Uh, when you're out there, you can find a key, and the key will show you on the map where the special buried cache is. Uh, so if you run to that, and you're, if you're the first one there, you can dig it up, unlock it, and get everything that's in it. Um, typically, it's, it's, it's parts and other uh, consumables and, and resources, but they're really high-level parts. They're like gold parts for making gold weapons. So or it's something to keep your eye open. And, or gold consumables. That's right. Weapons yeah. and consumables. Yeah. Um, so the buried cache is something that spawns in every map. Um, and there's like 20 to 30 different locations that potentially could be. And if you, but you can't open it unless you find the key, you can find it without the key. But you just can't get into it. So yep. you need to find the key. And there's usually about six or so versions of that key out on the map somewhere to find. So once you have the key, you can go to it and open it. So, um, but yeah, so this was crafting stuff. Um, is, is done through here. Like here's crafting the Thompson um, submachine gun, 15 seconds. Um, if you have uh, the plan, which I do, and it takes 950 materials. So that's where your your materials comes into play for for weapons and for consumables. Is if you you need to have a bunch of materials to make the things. But if you have the parts, again, you don't use any materials. You're just using the particular parts. Here you need three parts to make a, a Thompson for free. And then it um, will come with a stack of uh, ammo, usually too. And then there's deconstructing. Um, deconstructing, so when you go into the deconstruction screen, it gives you all the different categories. If it's a weapon, ammo, consumables, um, resources that you have in your shelter, all that can be con deconstructed. And when you deconstruct it, what you're doing is you're breaking it down to its base materials. And then that materials at the top of your, um, of your screen will go up based on what you deconstruct. And so here, I'm just showing, you know, here's a bugle. If I were to deconstruct this bugle, I would get 3,000 materials for it. And you make um, a lot of people cry. And you make a lot of people cry because it's a nice weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and it also, like, just to really rub it in, it shows you its stats. It's like, if you break this down, you're not going to have this weapon that has single fire, burst fire, and full auto and does this damage in this range. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and it's a purple. But, uh, and, and when it comes, and this is the one area where if you have multiple of something, you can do it all at once. So if I had yep. 66 of these, I could break them all down. Yep. Um, but I would get a lot of materials for it. And so, you know, it could, it could be handy depending on what you're trying to craft. Um, and then that a value that you get for it um, is going to be changed by one of your shelter upgrades. And that's the... Um, is that that's not the distillation one? I think it's the chem is that the chemical one or the water distillation? Uh, for increasing uh the cost. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Oh, the the value. I think it's water. I think you're right. I think it's the water distillation. So there's a wa the water distillation um upgraded for your shelter. As you go up in levels on that, it helps um with your breakdown. It'd be deconstruction, so you'll get more materials as you deconstruct something. Yep. And there are um challenges for deconstructing, so they could say deconstruct uh, so many bugles and so if you do it yeah you, you'll get a, a special reward you're also going to make a lot of people cry but you know it happens yep. <laughs> sometimes yep. you do what you got to do <laughs> um and i don't think you mentioned you could actually deconstruct co uh parts as well and oh, parts as well uh, yeah the only difference is if you're deconstructing parts you're not getting the same amount as deconstructing the full weapon but it's like yeah. a minor decrease in what you would get um so yeah. it, honestly if you really want to like deconstruct uh parts uh you know you know you might as well take that little hit um uh, because instead of crafting it and then deconstructing it um you know the difference isn't that huge so right yeah and uh same with materials um like you, you don't uh, not the same with materials, but when you were deconstructing materials, um, the level of the material will, you know, determine how much uh, you get for it. Um, it's not the kind of thing that you're probably not going to do right away. It's like maybe once you finished yeah. your shelter, that's like that's when I've deconstructed materials because you're just resources amassing, resources. 
that's what I meant. Resources. Thank you. Yeah. Not materials. Resources. Um, yeah, because once you finish your um, your shelter, then they're not really good for anything yet. Uh, there's a potential shelter upgrade coming, so we'll, we we don't know what it's going to need yet. So that's one reason to hold on to um, different resources, but we don't know what we're going to need. So, uh, but if you need the materials, you know you're always going to get more resources because that's that's the game. You're going out there, you're looting, you're getting um, uh, resources, you're getting weapons, you're getting consumables, and bringing it back. So. And that's another thing we didn't kind of mention yet is uh, your resource value. <clears throat> One of the things you can track on the um, leaderboards is uh, extracted resource value. It used to be called loot value. Now it's called restracted, retract, <sighs> extracted resource value. <laughs> I was trying to say that. And it's like, that doesn't flow off the tongue. Um, and we have a whole episode on that. So check that out too. Um, there's an episode talking about loot value. Um, it's a little older, but it's essentially still relevant. It, you know, not much has changed for that. Um, so there's two different things when it, when it comes to encounters. There's experience and there's uh, the resource value. Those are the two different stats you, you kind of track. Experience is used for getting up in bat battle pass levels. And resource value, really, it's just for um, the leaderboards, you know, trying to get your average, you know, high as high on those particular leaderboards as possible. If you're into that kind of thing, that's something to, to keep keep up, keep track of. But we do have some episodes on that. We have episodes on getting the most out of your XP and episodes on and on resource value. So we'll put the current links down in these in the description of this as well. So if you want some more uh, material on on how to improve your game, check them out. Um, but also check out, there's a lot of good big, um, bigger related content out there. Uh, now that you're getting, to, getting into the game, uh, make sure to check them out because, yeah, there's a lot of people who really love this game. Um, and, you know, there's some, maybe some people who aren't creating or playing the game much anymore, but they still have the content out there. So it's worth checking out. Um, but just look, you know, look for the different uh, content that's out there. Did we have anything else here? Oh, I just had a, a couple screenshots. This is of your, when you're looking at your uh, weapon bunker, um, you'll see all the different weapon spots on the uh, on the walls. And so, you know, they're mostly going to be empty at first. As you find weapons and bring them back to your shelter, it'll, it'll put a version of that weapon on the wall. And if you get skins, it'll show you what your current equipped skin is. And it's also where you'll see plan so as you see here i have like the right in front of me is the plan for the uh the tommy gun um so it has the plan right behind the weapon as you find more plans it'll show them on the wall and if you have the weapon in your inventory it'll show it with it so if you like say you use the last of a particular weapon um you might still have the plan on the wall but it won't show the weapon on the wall so that's that's a that's a a reason to always keep at least one of a weapon <laughs> for me anyways, just so I can look in here and see it in all the little crates on the floor. That's where you, the different consumables that you um, have and can make. So if you have the plans for it, it'll show the plan with it. Um, and if you have any, it'll be in one of those little crates and it has like a little, each crate will have a little outline showing this is what goes in this crate. If you don't have any like smoke grenades or um, portable signal detectors, that kind of thing. Um, we do have like an episode on tools, on different tools you can, uh, and how to, how to use them. So another, another one to check out, <laughs> I'll, I'll keep yeah. plugging each episode we have. We, we only have 86 or so, um, you know, you yeah. might want to skip some of the ones about seasons, but if you want to see what a season was like, go check it out. <laughs> um, um, do, do we want to talk about, uh, quickly about how encounters, what different things yeah. are found in an encounter. So, uh, in an encounter, um, you know, you'll see an icon which kind of looks like a, a little like a radio tower. So that's your signal detector. Um, so if you hit that, uh, it'll show uh, the location at the time where every enemy outlander is located. Um, the cooldown is about two minutes um, and no one else can use it in that meantime. Uh, it's typically a hotspot um, for, uh, you know, uh, the encounters. Uh, there's also, um, uh, it, it, again, it looks like a, a radio tower, but this time there's like a lightning bolt, like an electricity that's the disruptor. Uh, so that jams any signals from the signal tower or uh, a portable, 
um, so you won't be detected while you're there. Um, there's kind of like, um, oh my God, how do you describe a comm station icon? It almost looks like a little building with an <laughs> antenna on it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, what uh, I so could do is, um, here, give me one. Oh, no, I may not be able to. I was going to, um, yeah, don't, don't uh, worry about it. Get a map up. I was going to try to get a map up, but I, I oh. can't as easy no, no, as I thought it. I could. Um, so uh, there's a comp station. Uh, there's up. Uh, there's usually three of them on every uh, encounter map. Um, so this, uh, you get to apply uh, either buffs or debuffs, or I forget what they're technically called. Uh, but uh, basically, you could move the airdrop. Uh, you could buff it where it's going to include some ammo, um, some bandage, and an antibiotic as well. Um, you could um, give it quick release where it's like, literally, it's like the press of a button will unlock it uh, and put it in your inventory. Um, oh my god, what's the other one? Uh, other, the other buff? Yeah, what's the yeah other you buff? can move it. Um, there was the uh, quick, quick release. release. There was Stealth It. Oh, stealth is the other one where, uh, you know, if it's stealth, no one will see you on the map because when you have an airdrop, it doesn't matter if it's the red crate or the um, uh, the actual airdrop from the plane, uh, you will be marked on the map. So you can stealth it. Um, and then you could do the debuffs, which I, I forget what, it's not technically a debuff anymore. They changed buff and debuff, but I forgot what the actual terminology is. Um, but um you could uh, make it overweight which is going to add weight to it uh it's going to slow you down um you could booby trap it where it would basically set a booby trap to the uh, map and you'd have to hit the key combination uh to unlock it um there's a decoy which it would make it uh, a second airdrop which would uh, if someone go would go and loot it uh you would have a single nail uh, within it uh, but yeah. you would know the location of the correct one. Uh, and then there's radiation, uh, or you could radiate it, I mean. Uh, so the minute you pick it up, uh, it's actually radiated. So it has the same effect of uh, the encounter radiation. Um, uh, so I did that's... bring up a map here. So this is a, just a one of the maps is called Battery, and there's two versions of it. But this is just an example of a map. So as, as DJ was mentioning, um, there's the different icons you'll see on your map. Um, and there's like, like at the at the bottom, you'll see there's one that looks like an X that is around a door. That's the um, Bard House. That's one of the special loot events. And then just next to it, not, not far from it, is one called the Time Safe. So those are special loot events. You'll see them on the map. And all the little look like radios. Those are all the comm stations he was talking about for the boot yep. buffs and debuffs. And then there's a couple different towers um, on this one uh, in the upper sort of right of the map. By, by a comm station is one that's the signals detector he was mentioning. And then there's somewhere on here, oh, by the airdrop area where the name airdrop is, that's the, yeah. um, we call it again, uh, disruptor blocks everything, disruptor, disruptor tower. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. what it so, looks like. Yeah. So, uh, Bard House, uh, basically it's like a room that's like all the windows and doors are barred. Uh, so you have to break in and you unlock the safe. It takes about a minute, I believe, uh, for it to open. And then once you open it, you get the loot inside. Uh, time Vault, uh, there's two switches you have to flip uh, in order to uh, open it. Um, and you have to hit each switch within 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Uh, so in order to unlock it. Uh, the yeah. other event, there's always two loot events. Uh, and but there's technically three available. The other one's lock container. It basically looks like a little contain. It's a container with three padlocks on it where you have to unlock. Uh, you could shoot them or you could, um, you know, do the the combination. Which you just scroll through the numbers and your controller will vibrate or the number will flash green when you have the right combination. Yep. Um, so th those are the loot events uh, per se. Um, as Doc mentioned, there's an airdrop. Uh, zone so that's where typically like the airdrop will fall um, and with the comm stations you can move it uh, once uh, all those buffs and debuffs could only be applied once by the way yeah uh, not uh, a second time or whatnot um trying to think there's a limit else. of four interactions before the comm stations stop working so max as soon as, max max, not minimum. max four no no not minimum yeah max because um as soon as 
a fourth thing has been done to it, whether it be a yeah. buff or debuff, then they stop working. Yeah. Yeah. And basically up until the airdrop, like a minute before the airdrop comes, then or 30 seconds, uh, you could use it as well. Um, uh, one thing that's not here on the map, uh, Doc mentioned the buried cache. So if you find uh, the key for it, uh, it would be marked on the map. Uh, I can't actually see like the the big picture of it. Uh, it's very small for me, but uh, I'm assuming. And this is an older there. map. Yeah, it's an older map. So the exit symbols are the older exit symbols. They look like houses now, whereas here it looked like a almost like a camping symbol. Yeah. But it's essentially the same. It's the same setup. Yeah. yeah. So basically, you go into the counters. You could leave at any point. Uh, the red marks means that those are locked exits. Uh, so now it's like if you look at your map it will actually show you what resource you need to unlock um yeah. those exits with the old style never told you you didn't know till you got there now it tells you you're going to need electronics you're going to need wire yeah um and and like just rule of thumb too uh if there's uh typically like a dock with a boat on it it's usually fuel uh if it's like a broken down sailboat it's usually wire uh if it's a busted boat it's usually electronics um yeah so typically uh you have grantheim valley which has the middle exit uh that instead of uh unlocking an exit you could actually lock it because uh there's a ladder and you could cut the lines to the ladder so it would break the ladder yep. so no one else would can follow you uh phil canton has like uh, in the middle there's a cave um which you could actually lock so there's like a cage door uh so you, from inside the exit you could actually hit that uh, and it would swing the door close. Uh, there is another switch where you could activate it and it would reopen it, but um, that's like the yeah. opposite of unlocking. Um, and then... Yeah, Phil Canton is one of those interesting maps because it has a couple different cave systems, and yeah, one has that exit, um, and it can be. Uh, you, you, I, it's a it's a I want to call it a, a sweatier map. So it's like a a map where a lot of um, people who are usually quite good at the game who who like to snipe you know a lot of potential sniping in that map but also people can troll quite a bit in that map so like it, th that locked that exit they can lock and unlock sometimes people like to hide in there so you gotta be careful <laughs> if you know if you're going mm -hmm. in there just be cautious um but it's a fun map too it's, it's, it has a lot of uh neat features in it and it can be um and there's a i think it's is it the storm troll that has a you can find on the heli there's a, hel a crashed helicopter and one of the locations this particular troll, and I think it's a storm troll, can be found is on the tail of this helicopter. So you have to call, get up onto that tail and up to get it. There's other places you can find it, but I just think it's a neat area that there's a troll potentially on that helicopter. So yeah, um, so yeah, that's that's what typically an encounter kind of looks like. Um, the encounters typically last like ten to twelve minutes or so uh, before radiation actually comes in um as doc mentioned like the icons for the exits uh if you look at this one right here bottom right there's actually like red waves uh that's where the radiation is going to come from uh so you know what there will be a ticking sound um and then a buzzer which is your tomato timer which uh, i kind of have one right here uh but um, I too. <laughs> yeah. yeah so tomato so timer <laughs> there you go um so basically uh it means radiation's coming so it's going to sweep over the map. Uh, radiation will reduce your max health uh, until it's zero. Uh, but if you make it to the exit, um, it it doesn't matter if you run out of health, uh, you will survive. Uh, yeah, as soon as that counter starts ticking, you're safe. Yeah. Unless someone uh, kills you, you can still die. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the exits. Um, so yeah, that's, that's roughly what the encounters are. You basically go yep. in, you want to get as much loot as you can. Um, the airdrop necessarily isn't required because again, like, especially early on, you want to try to build up your, your shelter with getting your resources and whatnot. Um, uh, the loot events, again, the best loot is not necessarily there. So you can get better resources if you actually learn the maps, um, yep. you know, cause typically like chems, you, you'll find it around bodies of water. Um, but just go in explore the maps because not all these places where it's loot events that are, are going to actually have valuable loot um yeah loot events are a hotbed of activity so they're they're quite often fought over um or someone might be camping them 
Um, so, but like like I said earlier, you can find a weapon almost you know not necessarily anywhere, but there are, there are weapon crates. I, mean, I don't know if I mentioned that there are yeah. weapon crates around the, the the place. Quite often they just have parts in them, but sometimes they do have like a, a you know a common weapon in them. So you can find a weapon almost anywhere. So there, there's these things people like to do called zero to hero runs. Um, we go in with nothing, find a weapon if you and try to survive. You know that, that that's and that's totally possible to do. Um, the loot events just typically have a, like a higher caliber weapon in them. Like so, if you want a really good weapon, you know that that's a, that's a reason to go to them. But if you're just trying to survive, it's a, you know reason to stay away from them because they, they tend to be or... fought over. Yeah, yeah, or wait till like the fight's over. It's in in the encounter, and you swing by and yeah. pick up the scraps. Um, yeah, because also... you can only carry two weapons, so or like two main weapons, and so quite often yeah. someone will go over there, and it might have two or three weapons in it. They can't take them all, or they leave behind a you know a, a decent weapon to get a better weapon. So you can go in and grab something. You know, may not have ammo yeah. for it, but later on yeah. you can get ammo. Uh, there, there's also encounters. Uh, you can find combination lock boxes where it's like it was a combination again. Uh, you scroll through the numbers. Uh, when the number is right, it'll flash green. Or if your uh, controller vibrates, it'll, it'll vibrate yeah. if it's on. Um, and then that has resources. It'll have weapons, ammo, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, th that's just a rough idea of what you'll see in an encounter. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. yeah, for sure. And um, what else is it going to throw in there? Uh I think that's that's a lot of it. Um, one thing I didn't mention when it came to crafting, uh, I did say that when you have the plan for something, you craft it, you get some ammo. Uh, when it comes to ammo, when you want to craft ammo, uh, you have to have the plan for at least one weapon that uses that ammo. So, yep. uh, so as, as soon as you get like a, the plan for, and quite often there's like um, there's a few different guns that use. Uh, all use the same ammo, like in the different sort of series. Like there's the ES-16 um, shares ammo with the Bugle um, assault rifle, the uh, M249 machine gun, the uh, L85 machine um, assault rifle, and the L86 uh, machine gun as well. So you get all these different, and the A1, there's the A1 um, mm -hmm. rifle as well. They all use the same ammo. So as soon as you get the plans for any one of those guns then you can make the ammo for all of the guns um but if you haven't found the plans yet then you won't be able to make the ammo so that's a kind of a thing too just to keep in yeah. mind so yeah there, but, there's yeah. quite a quite a bit to learn uh you know mm -hmm. like doc was saying uh, ch uh check out different content creators on the various like live streaming or even youtube uh for recorded content uh you know uh Check out the partners, check out the non-partners, because like everyone will have different play styles and you know different ideas on how you should approach uh, the game and just find something that kind of adapts to you. Um, yeah. because j just like the different weapons, uh, it's all about personal preference, uh, your play style. So um yeah. and um maps too. So go back through our catalog. We've done um episodes on every map. So if you want to find out anything about a map go check it out um some of the some like i said some of the uh symbology on the maps might be a little outdated because it's changed a little but for the most part the maps are still generally the same as when we did our episodes on them so you can find out a lot about there um we, we've done episodes on loot you know where to find certain types of loot um, that might have changed a little bit since we've done those episodes and we may need to redo them but Still gives you a good general idea of where you can find certain types of loot uh, that you might be looking for, um, but yeah, uh, go yeah go back through our catalog because we we've definitely covered a lot of this. But uh, this we wanted to get out again because there's going to be new. If you might be coming from PC or you might just be starting all, from fresh from on one of the consoles, and we want to just do a little bit of an updated. Hey, this is bigger. This is what a lot of this means. Probably would have been better if we could have given given more examples of stuff. But you know, this is get you get you started right it's a bit of a longer episode for us um <laughs> there's that uh so you, you may you may be you may have been watching this in chunks you know as we d went over each category maybe you came back to it we appreciate it if you did um but again you know please like share and subscribe uh it helps you know uh more people who yep. see this 
maybe get uh, even if they haven't played bigger before maybe uh it'll expose them to bigger you know if it, maybe a friend of yours who um youtube knows you're connected and then you you watch this video and shared it maybe he'll, they'll see it and hey what's this and and check out the game because you know we've been doing we've been playing this game for four years now and you know we still love it and it, and it's, it keeps growing and now that pc players are coming um it could get even bigger so we we uh everybody who uh knows about it just you know gives, gives it more reason to stick around and uh, get better yep yeah okay uh, but i think that's a great place to stop so um it's been a couple hours thanks for hanging out <laughs> if you if you if you're at this point um and uh yeah uh, i've been dr anton and i am forever gj spencer indeed um we'll have all of our links in the bio in the bottom for our streams for for our different socials please check them out um but until next time stay safe in the outlands and have a great night bye bye <laughs>